Moving into image transmission settings here. First one looking at here is the work frequency. Recommendation would be to just leave it on dual band with OcuSync 2, OcuSync Enterprise. You have the dual band frequency switching that's automated within the application. Have seen some situations in congested environments where the 5.8 gigahertz band has worked better just an FYI in that regard. I would say the majority of time, just leaving that dual band, I can manually select 5.8 or 2.4, and then can also click on signal strength to make adjustments as well. But you can see here in the image channel selection, channel mode is set as auto. You can also change it over to custom, and as you can see the warning in the app there, uh, use caution here. You're gonna be required to choose transmission channel yourself. And if you choose a channel with strong interference, it may lower image transmission quality. I would encourage you though to just go into the app and check this out. Uh, depending on the area, you'll see uh, just how interference can really be moving around quite a lot in a lot of situations. And that's why the auto can be quite useful. Scrolling down here, you can also change the downlink bandwidth over to 10 megahertz instead of 20. You'd want to select 10 if you're in a situation where potentially you're encountering some strong interference and you're having some issues with that downlink from the drone. Switching that over to 10 megahertz could help in that situation. And then below that, you can also see your image transmission code rate. Moving back to our image transition settings menu here, I can go ahead and turn the HDMI output on. For your reference, also in the mobile device, such as a smart controller, there's going to be additional settings within the smart controller device settings, not the pilot app settings uh, for the HDMI output itself. I've seen some streaming devices require uh, the settings of the Smart controller to be set to 1080p instead of the auto that it's on by default. So just small heads up there. But when you do turn that HDMI output on, you can go ahead and switch the HDMI output video output type. <laughs> Quite a mouth, mouthful there. About three options, duplicate screen, basically exactly what you see on the mobile device screen, the smart controller screen, the crystal sky screen is what's going to be displayed. Uh, maybe you have a big TV monitor that you're going HDMI to HDMI or a wireless connection there uh, with the HDMI. Clear camera view would be just a clear camera view, camera only. And then camera view is going to be uh, the camera view that you have selected plus uh, some telemetry information. And if we get into something like Matrice series, uh, just for reference, uh, the camera view would be the one that you have selected as your main screen, uh, not the one in the bottom right, uh, second camera, FPV camera, etc. cetera. Matter two enterprise, it's only one uh, camera that you have selected on your main screen. You don't have an option for another one. So it would be that camera view. Aircraft battery. First off, you can click on the details of the battery itself. You can see with the Mavic 2 battery here, it's four cells, 3.73 volts, 3.72 volts. Can obviously tell uh, this voltage is getting pretty low. Uh, voltage doesn't go down to zero like your battery percentage does, just as an FYI. And something you technically want to monitor here if the app didn't do it for you, it does, is would be a significant deviation between cells. So if one was at 3.8 and one was at 3.7, uh, that would be an issue. Um, but we'll look at our recent battery maintenance uh, guide for enterprise drones, or just, I guess, DJI drones in general, or the battery safety guidelines for more information on that. But you can also see uh, information here, battery percentage, temperature, voltage, cycle counts. All right, so batteries should be retired at a maximum of 200 cycles. So that's how you would use a cycle, a cycle count. You can see the production date, serial number as well, if that was needed. But going back to here is a real key concept here. First one being smart return to home. So this 
as it says, the aircraft's going to return to home when the remaining battery is only enough to return to home. And you can see I've kind of highlighted it in orange rectangle here, and then it's shown up here in the top left as that yellow H. Critical battery warning, uh, this is these two and low battery warning are set by the user. So that's the furthest left white circle. That's your low battery warning. I'm uh, sorry, critical battery warning. Critical battery warning on the left because that's this, you can think of this as like a timer, right? The drone's slowly going down. We'll have another example of this in the next page. And then low battery warning, uh, we can see at 20%. So in this situation, it's going low battery to smart to return to home uh, to critical battery warning. And we'll get a little more in depth here. You can see another example here where the low battery warning is much higher uh, than smart to return to home and the critical battery warning. So first off, a low battery warning. This is gonna be set by user and the RC is gonna beep, beep, beep. Basically just like heads up, the low battery warning that you set is starting to go off. Smart return to home is determined by the drone software uh, based on how far away it is, what your return to home altitude is. It's saying, all right, at this point, we need to return to home uh, to make sure we land with sufficient battery life. Critical battery warning, once again, set by the user, and the RC is going to start beeping faster. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Could just be the RC myself. And then finally, low battery aircraft landing. So this isn't something you can set. Basically, the drone's just like, I don't got anything left in the tank, I'm coming down. Uh, so it's gonna start descending. You do have some control over the aircraft. I could do reference user manual in that regard, uh, specifically uh, for battery uh, landings and whatnot, uh, but ultimately the, the aircraft is coming down, it's going to land because the battery is so low. So just how this looks in the app, you can see first one being the low battery warning, it says low battery and the status bar on the top, then it goes to smart return to home, it pops up saying aircraft's going to return home in 10 seconds and that 10 is going to start counting down so a screenshot here is at seven you can go ahead and cancel that in the application you can cancel it on your rc by holding the return to home button or you can just hit okay and it's going to ahead and proceed with that return to home you can see now when we get to that next white dot with two minutes and 44 seconds left we have a critical battery warning that we set and then finally low battery aircraft will land uh, in this case at the two minute 12 second mark so that's kind of the progress of what might, might happen with your battery. All that being said, um, ideally we shouldn't be getting to those you know, final battery stages where the aircraft's coming down and you know, we're in a bit of a, a panic you know, as the drone pilot where we don't have sufficient battery left. So this, these settings definitely depend on the flight distance, battery life, SOPs, and a lot of factors, but ultimately we want to leave sufficient battery life for any irregular irregularities, <laughs> I wrote the word, having trouble saying the word, that may occur. So typical SOP may be landing the drone at 25% battery or higher. But once again, there's situations uh, with your landing zone you may not be able to control. And maybe someone comes into the landing zone, um, maybe as the pilot um, and you're flying the drone back, um, you have an issue there where you can't land the drone right away. Uh, so good to have uh, SOP at a little bit higher, or you're really bringing the drone back from a far distance. Uh, so once again, shooting for 25%, and maybe you underestimate that a little bit, and you're coming down at 20% instead. So uh, having those SOPs is key, and then manually setting those reminders in the app uh, to let you know uh, for the situation that, hey, the battery is at this level, and as the RPIC in that situation, you wanna know what to do. Ideally, monitor battery throughout the flight. You have a VO or a sensor operators that making that call out as well. Another good tip. DJI aircraft batteries here with intelligent flight batteries. With most aircraft, you're able to set a time to battery self-discharge. Uh, this was just added for the Mavic 2 Enterprise series. Um, but at X amount of days that you set, the battery is going to start self-discharging down to 60% protects the battery itself. If you leave a battery at 100% and not good for the health of the batteries, once again, battery a guide, 
battery safety guidelines, a good reading material if you'd like to know more about that. Uh, but here within the application, you can set that between one to 10 days for that time where the battery is going to start self discharging. Gimbal settings here, uh, you can set your gimbal mode to FPV or follow. Follow's default. I don't know exactly why you would use FPV in most scenarios because the camera is going to yaw with the aircraft instead of staying steady on the horizon and yaw left or right with the aircraft. So I just leave this in follow mode uh, the majority of the time. Gimbal pitch limit extension just allows you to pitch the gimbal a little bit more. And just showing some more settings here. I thought it was easiest to demonstrate with a video. Uh, but first one, we're gonna increase the max gimbal pitch speed. So you can see when the camera is going up and down, it's moving quite a lot faster. The next one, uh, max gimbal pitch speed, uh, lowering it. So you can see the gimbal is moving a lot slower. Reset gimbal parameters. If you want to reset those pitch speed values. And then camera forward down. We'll just bring the camera forward and down. A gimbal calibration. If the gimbal is not centering properly, you might want to go ahead and do a gimbal calibration. And then adjust gimbal. You can adjust the centering point of the gimbal uh, if it's slightly off center in that last screen you set and last screen you saw. So you could say, hey, when uh, the gimbal turns on, I want you to be two degrees to the right every time uh, because maybe uh, there is some damage to the gimbal or it's having an issue and it's just being a, starting off a little bit to the left instead of centering. So by adjusting the gimbal, you're able to make some smaller adjustments to the center point of that gimbal if it's not uh, after a calibration or returning to its center point and responding to your commands properly. Menu here, we'll get into a little bit more when you go in flight, uh, but this is only gonna pop up with the Mavic 2 Enterprise series when you have an accessory attached. Uh, right now, you see we have spotlight settings, uh, but that's why you see it present in some screenshots and not present in others. Just depends if there's an accessory attached. Three dots here at the bottom is our common settings. First off is the map switch. Auto, it's just gonna choose it based on your location. A map is not for the US, it's also not in English, so really wouldn't use it. Uh, map box is for the US, so auto, if you're in the US, is just going to select map box for you. If you're having trouble getting the map loaded, good quick tip here, just toggle the map switch between auto and map box. Make sure you're connected to the internet as well, uh, but that could get to the map to load if you're having some issues with it. Next up, our flight trajectory here. You can see the gray line there when we were reviewing the flights earlier, uh, but this is actually gonna be shown on the, the map, which we'll get into during flight. It's basically uh, tracking of where your drone is flown. So if you want that shown on the map, you would leave this toggled on. Show B GPS is just gonna display the current GPS location of the drone on the main screen. Unit settings. Metric, Imperial, GPS format, Fahrenheit, Celsius, etc. You have the ability to adjust those unit settings. LED settings, you have an option to turn off the lights on the drone, those frame arm LEDs. Uh, so, kind of just discrete mode here if you didn't want those lights on the drone. Live stream, this would be an option for streaming. Obviously, the HDMI out from the controller is another one. Uh, but you would type RTMP colon slash slash RTMP address slash stream key. So RTMP address and stream key are two things you're going to have uh, when completing an RTMP stream. Common settings here, ESC beeping. The drones needed to be connected to the RC for this, but if you had perhaps an emergency landing of the drone in some tall grass and you're having trouble locating it and looking at the, the camera view, you're not able to do so, maybe having some trouble with the GPS as well. Uh, and you could just test this uh, with your drone on the ground, but you turn ESC beeping on, it, the drone is just going to start uh, beeping. Um, but kind of a neat feature when you turn uh, the drone on itself and you hear the da -da 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 -da, 
I don't even know if I'm saying that right, man, messing up all my sounds for things I've heard so many times in my life, but uh, ESC beeping, you can enable that aircraft pretty much will start beeping for a location. RC needs to be connected to the drone. You can change the device name of the drone uh, that shows up in your aircraft logs. If you're looking at flight records, I mean, use I'd say for that. And then finally, if you click on about here at the bottom of common settings, this is important. If you'd like to check your current versions, reference that with the most recent release notes on our website and also the DJI Pilots page. It's part of the download center. You can also check for updates as long as the RC is connected to the internet, that will be a successful check. If you check for an update, the RC is not connected to the internet, it's just going to say latest version. And then if you scroll down, you can get the flight controller serial number, which you would use uh, for no fly zone slash geofencing unlocks. You need the flight controller serial number of the drone uh, for that. And here in this menu uh, is the way to get that. So we just went over a lot of settings for the pilot app with the Mavic 2 Enterprise. I know if this is kind of the first time going through that, it can be definitely overwhelming. Or if it's, you know, your next time through it, hopefully learn some new items. But this really shows the importance of having a pre-flight checklist as the items in the pilot app, you know, are an important part of taking flight, but they're just one part of it. And many of the variables when we go to fly can be taken care of ahead of time, uh, such as authorizations, inspection of the drone itself, uh, making sure you have your default settings uh, to what you want. Uh, so the drone can be launched quickly if that's needed. And circling back to where we started here, uh, the, drone, the application does provide a checklist and that's gonna be the first thing you see. And now hopefully some of these items uh, or all of them, I should say, make sense now that we've gone through the detailed settings. But you can see how return to home altitude is something that you always want to have correctly set, want to know your flight mode, uh, need to see if there's any issues with your compass or IMU, so you can go ahead and calibrate them, your ESC status, aircraft battery level and temperature, uh, vision sensors, ES, or no, ESC status, we already went over that. Uh, just going down a bit farther, though, uh, control stick mode, talked about mode two is default for many, the remote controller battery, easiest way to see that is in this checklist, uh, gimbal status, and then remaining capacity in regards to this one, it's just the internal storage of the drone, but if you had an SD card, uh, you go ahead and take a look at that as well. So that wraps things up for settings with the Mavic 2 Enterprise series and the pilot app, kind of before taking flight, and we'll continue moving on through this series. Thanks.